Oh, hello world and welcome to Funny Money. I am Dominic Syracuse. My name's Caleb Williams. And for those of you who haven't uh, checked out any of the previous episodes, if this is your first episode, first of all, go back and watch those other episodes, okay? After this one's done. But to give you context, uh, I am an actor and stand-up comedian and formerly starving artist. And Caleb here is the financial expert, guru, genius, world's kindest human being, and uh, most adorable smile winner as well. Um, (laughs) And a while back, uh, Caleb met me. He saw me do a stand-up set and was very impressed by Mm -hmm. what I could do and came up to me and asked me if uh, I was making any money off of this. Just jump right in. Just jump right in. And I answered, actually, no. Because like many starving artists out there, uh, I wasn't able to do what I loved and was passionate about full time. I had to work a bunch of day jobs to support myself and um, my dreams and all of this. And I had to choose between what I was good at versus being practical. And Caleb said, hey, how about I teach you how to yep. take your skills and become more wealthy than you've ever imagined off of doing what you love. And I said, uh, you're crazy. And then I found out he's not, he's super legit. I Googled him and <laughs> and we, we built a friendship and now uh, I, I can't be selfish. I can't be selfish with your knowledge. His knowledge has changed my life so much that we decided to do a podcast together where we go through the lessons he's teaching me and hopefully other people can learn from these things so that you can start generating more wealth than you've ever imagined off of doing what you love. Yeah, and and it has way more to do with this one concept is a lot of people that are pitching wealth and all this stuff, they're, they're talking about, you know, living this lavish lifestyle quite frankly, intentional living is everything. And if, mm. and if Dom can live intentionally, because yes. I know his heart, he's wealthy. And Absolutely. when we're not able to live intentionally, then we're not wealthy. And there's a lot of people that have a lot of money in a bank account that do not have clarity. They're not being efficient. And right. quite frankly, they have nicer stuff, but they're not living intentional. You know, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I have other friends. One thing that you told me, which was which meant a lot to me, yeah. is that you told me that I have a wealth of talent. 100%. But oh, yeah. that wealth of talent was not translating to money. a wealth of income, you right? No money. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And he's like, th- this needs to change. And yeah. I'm going to teach yeah. you how to change it. And it yeah. is teachable. So you started showing this to me. But I have friends who actually are very successful. Uh, yeah. They're making a ton of money. They're putting away you know, so much money a month, but the thing is they're not, they're not happy. Yeah. They're not happy yeah. because either they're not doing what they love or they haven't had that uh, component of, yeah. okay, I'm generating income, but am I intentional about it? Right. Am I living with intention? Am I living with purpose? Yep. Yeah. And so uh, hopefully we can grab some clarity on all those yeah. things. So this is part two of the video. If you have not watched part one or got his whole story, please go back and watch that. But but, but essentially I want to talk about our four principles at Better Wealth. And, I, and and these are really the framework. Like if, if you're starting from zero or you have multiple millions and you don't fully understand how to think about money, watch these videos because this will give you the framework of how to think. And then we're gonna talk about all kinds of fun stuff after this in this right. series, okay? Right. So do you wanna switch over? Yeah, so so we should probably recap so, on so, the first we'll, two. We'll do real quick. Real so quick. Step, principle number one is what? You. Yes, and, the, and the, the importance of this is to maximize who you are and get clarity on where you wanna go. Right, self-awareness. Who? What do I want? What am I good at? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Right, the second the second principle is all about efficiency. There's three yes. things. Can you remember the three? Oh my gosh, uh, efficiency. Uh, uh, you have your, is it is it your cash flow? Yep, money coming in. Yep, money and coming in. And the goal for this is what? Is to um, is to generate that money. Is to optimize it. Optimize once you, it. Once you have your money coming in, he um, Dominic explained how his money was going all over the place. He wasn't tracking it, and at what the money that he was going is, he was even saving for retirement yeah. and barely making ends meet. Right. He was not being efficient with his cash flow. Absolutely. The second, the second one is, is, is assets. Yep. 
we will look at your assets. Now, Dom didn't have assets. Right. A lot of you do, and they're not working for you. So we want to ask the question, if you have clarity on where you want to go, are these assets best living for, for you? And I'll let you take the back. You did yeah. have assets. I did. You, you had some retirement accounts that were not working for you well. That's right. That's right. Uh, Caleb came up to me and told me that I didn't have great assets, and I thought he was <laughs> he was making an insult towards me. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, he said that, that uh, these assets I were having, uh, not only were they not helping me, they were in fact hurting me. Right. And, and the big thing for you is you did not debt. have an efficient debt payoff oh, strategy. I was so badly in debt. I was so, so badly in debt. And I would also do like, I would get impulse debts too, because, you know, yeah. I, I wasn't making enough money to pay the bills. And my thought was, well, maybe I can go get another loan to help me pay this <laughs> off. You know, yeah. the, anyway, I was just burying myself yeah. in this debt. Yeah. So, so step number one, you, step number two is be efficient. Now, are you ready for actually how to Let's, build wealth? Uh, yes. Okay. Principle number three, Here drum we go. roll please, is all about consistency. Woo, okay. All right. Now, I can't spell, so I'm not going to spell yeah. consistency, but I'm going to say C for yes, consistency. For now, consistency. What's, interesting, what's interesting is you teach people how to be wildly successful yes. when it comes to speaking and acting and one of the one of the principles that's that right. you talk about is consistency so that's how do you right. define consistency so, so uh just to clarify uh caleb told me that i need to take my skills as an acting teacher and translate them to online courses and luckily i got the uh the attention of a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs who while they're making online videos like this and podcasts yeah. they want to know how to be effective on camera and so I created what I call the seven C's of captivating content. And the seventh C is consistency. And the thing about consistency, people ask all the time as an actor is, where they say, how are you able, stand up, right? How are you able to have a great show night after night after night after night? And my answer is consistency. You're trained to not only be excellent once, but to be consistently excellent. And the way to do that is just, it's, it's discipline, and repetition, right? Yeah. Discipline yeah. and repetition, and also understanding yeah. the long game. I love that, man. You set you set this whole principle up. Do you want to go back to the screen? Yeah. So consistency is a combination of two C's. Two C's. Okay. okay? When you the third principle is you you got to be consistent, and right. you got to be consistent long term, mm -hmm. which we're gonna call this compounding. Okay. Okay. We're going to have a whole video on this series talking about compound interest. Love it. But compound interest is your money continuing to grow over time. Yes. Time, interest rate, and money equals good things in the future. Awesome. A lot of people are talking about this. It's very hard to get excited about this because it's a long-term thing. But sure. the second C is all about control. Ooh. And I think control is more of a short term. Okay. okay. So where a lot, a, lot of, a lot of times people are all in the long-term mentality. Right. But we have to understand that we need to be consistent now and in the future, and every decision we make needs to be made for now and in the future. Oh, we need awesome. to have we need to have an understanding. I'm gonna have another video that talks about opportunity cost. Yes, we have to understand that every dollar that you make, yes, has a long term value uh -huh. and a short term. A quick quick story of this. Okay. I was um, I had friends over and I taught them this principle, and we went out to lunch the next day. Okay. And the, I paid $64 for lunch. It was like okay. a buffet, okay? And um, this this kid, his name's Yoshi or Josh, <laughs> he, he said to me, he said, Caleb, this this lunch costs you a lot more than $64. And I said, what do you mean? Because mm. I, I knew what he was meaning because we were talking a little bit about right? this. He said, over your lifetime, this is money that you will never able to work for you ever again. And we took out a calculator and we found that this lunch actually cost me over three grand over my lifetime. Wait, what? Do you know why? Huh. Because this money, if it was saved long term, would be worth a lot more than a dollar. Oh, Does that make sense? Because yes. it would be able to work for me. Yes. But every time, repeat after me, every yeah. time you lose a dollar. Right, every time you lose a dollar. You don't just lose that dollar. You don't just lose that dollar. But you lose what that dollar could have worked, earned for you the rest of your life. You lose what that dollar could have earned for you. You know what's the most amazing part of that story? Is that you paid for a bunch of people and it was sixty four dollars because uh, in L A that <laughs> would have been three dollars yeah. three thousand yeah. dollars if it, any more yeah. than there I've paid sixty four dollars for water and a crouton in Los Angeles so I'm still stuck on how yeah. cheap that well, lunch was yeah. no but as you're saying it, it didn't it what you're saying is it didn't yeah. that money could have been put in a way that could have grown right. 
But instead it was... But here's the other thing is, I'm not playing... I like understanding a long-term yes. mindset, but I'm also, what am I doing in the short term? I'm employing people, I'm marketing, yep. I'm investing. So not only did I lose... I lost $64 today that right. could potentially be turned in multiple things. Yep. So that's control aspect, that's short term. Right. But I ultimately lost the ability to grow it over time. Wow. So the principle here is we have to be consistent yes. in saving number one. We have to we have to understand that we need to be consistent long term. Right. But we also have to be consistent in the control aspect of controlling our money today. Absolutely. And also don't buy your teen lunch. They <laughs> don't yeah. they don't need it. I'm just it's, a, it's really costly when you <laughs> think about all the money. Stop stop it. All right. Tell them to get back to work. In fact, tell them you won't feed them in less than. Right. I'm just kidding. So I'm how just would you joking. how would you des describe consistency? Because this this is yeah. by far the hardest principle, but I think it's the most profound. Yes, and and, and really for for me, it's, let's talk about the acting world. Okay, let's talk about my favorite example that I like to use is is Kevin Hart. Okay, right. Yeah. Kevin Hart is someone who's well known not only in the acting and, and stand up world, but also in the financial world as well, mm -hmm. and the and the and the personal development world. He is the king of consistency because if you go back and watch, you can actually find it on YouTube. Um, he has a set from when he was 18 years old, mm. young. Mm. And I'll tell you what, he crushed this set. I mean, it, he, he, it, the set was amazing. Mm. And it was for about 12 people. You can see him in this little room and he's crushing it for about 12 people. And then... Mm. I follow his career. Ten years later, you see him filling out a comedy club doing the same joke. But he did the same joke with the same amount of fervor and the same yeah. amount of passion. And then, ten years later, you see him doing the same joke, but now he's sold out Madison Square Garden. And he's doing the same joke. And here's the thing, is that the joke itself was funny, whether it was from ten people yeah. or or... 500,000, but yeah. the thing was, was he was able to consistently hit it, consistently find the drive he needed to yeah. keep hitting it, keep making it work, keep never tiring of it, yeah. never getting bored with it, never doing that. Yeah. And what, what that taught me as a performer was, okay, it's part of my job to continually to continually keep my tools fresh and continually work on this thing over, even if I don't feel like yep. doing it, even if I don't feel like like working on it, right. even if I get tired of it, still every single day, just just making sure that I not only hit it, but hit it with the same passion and intensity that I did yep. from the beginning. Yep, and, and the crazy thing is how he showed up at 18 is impacting his future. Right. But also helped him get to the next gig. Exactly. Does that make sense? Like that's exactly. actually a perfect example. When we think about consistency, we have to understand that every decision you make, yes, every decision you make with your money, your time, has a short term and long term effect. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's the person that can be consistent and healthy habits yep. that will win in the end. Absolutely, and that's and that's the thing is that uh, so listen. So many people, let, let's go back to acting as the example, so many people can have one good show or one good movie. They're, 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 or with musicians, there's always like the one hit wonders. Somebody yeah. made one really good song, but their yeah. problem was they weren't consistent. Yeah. They weren't consistently making good work. And they're, the bands that have the longevity or the performers that have longevity, the people who have longevity in wealth or finance yeah. are the people who understand, look, Rather than just going out with one big, yeah. massive thing, yeah. I'm going to make sure that I am just steadily just just yeah. keeping it as as tight and consistent as I possibly can, yeah. uh, you know, Absolutely. and, and that's, that's the key to, to, to long-term success. All right, and the fourth principle, okay, so we want to be consistent with our money, and the fourth principle is all about use. Okay. Mm. Now the, the drawing that I draw here is I take a little something like a little dot here and do three arrows. Okay. Because the question is when you have money and you're growing it for the long term and short term, the question is where should I put my money? Yes. Okay. Yes. And and the question that I always go back to is what I talk about asset based activities. Okay. Asset. Uh, here we go. Based. Right. Activity. Okay. And asset based activities is essentially. What can you do with your time, your money, and your expertise? Right. That can give you get you closer to the result that you want. And so okay. let's let's play let's play this out. Okay? okay. Some of you are entrepreneurs. Yes. Okay. So some of you that that asset based activity is investing in your business. So for right. instance, you yeah. 
like you, uh, you, your eyes have been open. The money that I would be coaching you on mm -hmm. would go all into your business because I see this having the best long-term effect and short-term. Yes, okay? yes. Some of you are experts in the markets. Some of you are experts in real estate. Some of you are experts in other things. I would ask the question, is that expertise, do you see it uh, a greater value in investing your time and money in mm, Absolutely. Some of you guys need to take that money and go back to school and make more money. Some of you need to buy an online course to help you get trained in some area. Some of you just need to be self-aware and say, listen, I need to put my money in the market. I'm not gonna get crazy rate of return, but I just need to get it because I am don't have any talents really when it comes to money and I want to right. work and I just, I'll spend it. Like we have to be self-aware, but whatever activity that is, that will get you closer to your result. What I love about this is for some people, they need to pay off their debt. Right. Like for some right. people, it's like, dude, self-awareness, you have, you're paying 25% interest on your debt. Right. Take their money, by the way, instead of saving for an unknown future, right. take that money, pay off your debt and then and then velocitize your money and you'll actually have more money in the future. Right, right. I mean, that's that's what, like I've talked about this before on previous episodes, but yep. the problem with having debt, what I realized, especially with interest, I didn't understand how interest worked. Yep. You know, nobody taught me and I never bothered to learn. I had to learn by just yep. being buried in it for so long. And what I didn't realize was that not only was I, you know, having to take a huge chunk of my income, Yep. and put it towards these debts, but also they weren't going down anywhere. And yeah. when I thought about it and I said, wait a minute, not only could I be just saving or keeping this amount of money that I am just giving to somebody else, right? right? Just giving it to them for no return on me. You know, something that I paid for 10 years ago. Yeah. Now that the debts are paid off, I can take the amount of money I was giving that and invest in what you say is your greatest asset, myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not talking about, you know, because I think whenever whenever people are very poor, yeah. you fall into the trap of looking at wealthy folks and just wanting material things. Yeah. Right? You look at them and just go, oh man, I want, you know, you, you get these crazy lavish ideas. You're like, you're like, I want a shower that I that just rains down on me with like yeah. gold. And and if I had enough money, I would have a slip and slide from my bedroom down to my heated pool. Ridiculous kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, but I can then, honestly say I've never thought of that. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's just me. Maybe I just played too much Sims yeah. as a kid. But but the, the the thing is though is that then you realize, wait a minute, I have this money and what I can do is take this money, invest it in a class or a course to where I gain this knowledge that I can then generate more money from. Yeah. So rather than giving somebody money just to be more in debt, I can generate more money to grow more wealth off of my skills, yep. off yep. of my ability. You want to hit the whiteboard? There's, Let's there's do it. three There's three things. So number one is your time. Mm. Ask the question, and this is going back to your story, you yep. are super self-aware on the time that you are spending. Yep. And so how can you best use your time to help you get closer to the result that you want to live? Number two, how can you use your money? Yes. Number three, it's understanding that you have experience, you have talent, mm. and this talent is not, it, we're not all created equal. And so time money, talent, all go in to then figuring out what you should do with your time and money and wow. abilities. And this should ultimately help you get closer to ROR, which is return on result, which yes. is ultimately the kind of life that you want to live. And again, so it, do you understand how this could be like, this is how I think about money. Do we talk about the end asset? Do we talk mm -hmm. about products? Do we, no, no, no. It's, it's the framework of number one, you are your greatest asset. Get super ultra clear in what you want. Yes. Be self-aware in what you're good at. Start increasing your value. Right. Number two, look at the money that's coming in. Ask the question, is this money best helping me live the life you, you want to live? Maybe it's going toward investments that aren't serving you. Maybe you're spending it and you need to start tracking it. Right. Maybe you just literally don't have any money. Right. It's right. then looking at your assets, your investments, and saying, are these investments actually showing up powerfully in my life? And for most people, the answer is no. Right. And then it's looking at your debt and a lot of people don't have an optimized debt strategy. And so mm. what they're doing is they're working hard like Dom, they're working multiple jobs and not getting ahead. Yes. And, and can I just, uh, you, yeah. I just, okay. So in what you just witnessed on camera was my mind being blown. Go back to about five seconds ago and watch my face go blank. Cause you just 
gave me a revelation oh, that I want to share on camera is that you talk about this one right here, which says talent. Yes. Okay. It says talent. Now I've always known I was talented. You were the one who pointed out you're so talented, Right. but I realized that, you know, a, a lot of people ask, how do I make my hobby, which is the thing that I love, I yeah. think this is how you spell hobby, <laughs> into my my job, right? Into yeah. my how I earn my living. And what I realized and what you just said is that it's it's not about, it's about this. It's about the return on oh. result. Because here's the thing. I was, even though acting was my passion, was my, was my, uh, what I was so good at, and you asked, you asked me, how is it that you're so talented and aren't getting any money off this? Yeah. It's because it was still a hobby. And here's the difference. Because I was pouring tons of money into it. I was getting stand-up classes. I was paying to play. I was I, I, I spent $20,000 on an acting program, but I wasn't using it to make money back. Totally Instead, right. I was using the money just to make myself happy, which is good, but that's called a hobby. Yeah. When you are spending money on something to make you happy. The difference between this is I could have looked at that $20,000 I spent in acting school, and this is what you helped me realize, as an investment to actually make more yeah. money you off it, of dude. my skills. And that's the difference. So my problem was, you know, you look back and once again, Caleb asked me, and I, I'm gonna keep repeating it because it's a great compliment that makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. You, you said you are so talented. How are you not making money off of it? And it's because I didn't understand the return. I, I was yeah. honestly paying you all that money. I was paying all that money because to me, being a great actor fueled my soul. Yeah. And that's all it was for, was I'm gonna spend a bunch of money to fuel my soul. Yeah. And you said, actually, you can take that skill that you've learned and paid all this money for and get a massive return yeah. on it. Yeah. So that's, wow. Well, and, and so the money, yeah. <laughs> the, the money that you do make, it, you, we wanna be consistent and we wanna be consistent in two things. You remember what those two areas are? Um, yes, 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 yes. It was, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, fast cars and women, okay. right? Oh, sorry. I've been listening to too much. <laughs> so uh, they long term. No. Yes. It's long term and short, short term, right? So it's, uh, uh, consistency and control or er, yeah, yeah. compound, uh, compound and, control. and control. Yeah. And so we really, we just have to understand that we want to be consistent with our money. We want to put our money in a place that gets long term, but also gives us control. Because mm -hmm. I really, I really encourage people to see control. And then finally, what should you invest your money in? Yes. Well, instead of me saying invest in X, Y, and Z, it goes back to what you did in, in principle number one is clarity and ask the question, where can I put my time, my money and my talent? And what can I get the best? return on result. And for some of you, it's getting another job. For some of you, it's quitting that job and yeah. doing something that you love that will help you realize the results faster. For some of you, it's changing your investments. For some of you, it's investing in your company retirement plan and not spending. Like it's 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 so different, right. but it starts with self-awareness. Any any final thoughts I, I want? There's a lot more videos to be had. Yes. I wanna give you like an overview because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about individual topics, like yes. opportunity costs, like buying a house, like understanding time value of money, all these fun things. Yes. And, but I wanted people to understand the context of how I'm speaking and what we think about it better. Well. Absolutely. So, so listen, if you are a fan of my channel and you are seeing this for the first time and you want to get educated on money, understand that it's not ever just going to fall out of the sky. And also it's not something you have to be born with. You can learn these principles no matter what you have and build it. That's what Caleb does. And for those of you who are fans of Caleb and all of that, and you either just want to laugh or learn ways to be more captivating in front of a camera, check out my stuff. We have the links below and keep tuned for more funny money because we're, we're just, we're just getting, we're just getting started. started. We're just getting warmed up. Take care.